when people actually say Thérèse properly, I get like a shiver down my spine because in, in most of English speaking Canada, nobody says it correctly. So when people say it correctly, I just, it's the best. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time at the channel, hit subscribe right now. Therese, thank you so much for your time today. Um, let's recap real quick. Uh, you guys uh, did uh, two albums pretty quickly, one after the other, and then bam, only 10 years later, there's a third album. So I know that you're currently moving, and I know that you've been moving uh, a few times, and, and that your own personal journey in the last 10 years has been the key inspiration for this album. So do you want to enlighten us real quick on what was the main reason that we've had to wait 10 years for a new uh, Mirrors of Trace album? Because I had to keep moving for work. Like I had no choice. Like the industry that I work in did not, 10 years ago did not exist in my hometown. And like I needed to make money. Unfortunately, playing the metal makes negative money for most people. So <laughs> um, had to move to Chicago. Uh, after that, I had to move to where I am currently, which is in uh, Eastern Canada. Uh, and like between that and the hours that I'm required to keep for, for my job, like they're just, I didn't have any time or energy to, to write music and like in Calgary, which is where I'm moving to, which is my hometown, like I know all the musicians there and if I wanted to start like, like a bluegrass, or like a grindcore project, <laughs> I could just call up my old friends and be like, hey, do you want to start a bluegrass project? But that's really hard to do in a new city. Yeah. Um, but I think you also said bluegrass grindcore project, or did I misheard you? Well, I meant two different ones, but now. That I mean, I don't know. It. Now that it's out there now, <laughs> like, I think we are onto something here. Uh, you know, you describe uh, your band as 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 doom metal, or you say you make the joke. You know, when you play doom metal, you you tend to make negative money. Um, there's a lot going on in your sound. There always has been. Uh, this new album is 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 no different. In fact, I I would say that there's even more going on. You're trying some some different new things, and we'll get back to that. Um, especially when we look at uh, an epic song like the opener, uh, "Onward, Ever Onward." Um, I tried to kind of define that when I was listening to it, and I came up to something like ep epic blackened stoner doom or something like that. Um, is it is it is it too dangerous to keep looking for things and adding labels to it? Should we just say metal or doom metal, or do you have some fun once in a while uh, trying to think like how should I label this art that I'm creating? Well, epic blackened stoner metal is that's that's an amazing term <laughs> thank you for coming up with that i don't know um i've always had a short attention span with genres like i like so many subgenres of metal that i just I, I can't i just i can't confine myself to one and even if i tried like sometimes i'll intentionally try to narrow mm -hmm. down uh the influences like when i'm writing but it just doesn't really work Do you feel that there are a little bit more of those blackened influences in your music now than ever before? Uh, the drummer in my first band, or my, our first drummer rather, Steph, uh, she hated playing blast beats. Oh. <laughs> like I, I had to, I had to talk her into playing blast beats. But Casey's a little more open to it, so if there's a little more of that, that's why. Um, <laughs> I, I think blast beats are awesome, and I, I always wanted to throw some in, but that that might be why. But no, there've been a, there've been a couple. Uh, been a couple acts that I've really enjoyed that have black metal. But then even then, all my favorite black metal influenced acts are more black metal-ish than straight okay. up black metal. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Oathbreaker. They're actually okay. one, of my favorite, one of my favorite bands right now. And I like uh, Harakiri for the Sky too. Yeah. See, those are both like black metal-ish, but I wouldn't describe either of them as black metal. For sure, for sure. You yeah, know, absolutely. Well, I mean, give a give a black metal band enough time and they'll end up as a one person avant-garde uh solo project right um okay well um so uh now that you mention it you know with the change from uh, steph to casey um you know it's not it's not uncommon for bands to have a lineup change or have 
you know, oh, with Casey, we have a new guy that can do drums and bass. In the case of your band, which is just two people, that is a massive, massive change. How was that? Now, I know that you've worked with, um, if I remember correctly, you contributed some cover art for one of Casey's uh, other bands as well. I, I, the name escapes me right now, but I know that Casey's no stranger to you. But um, how was that change from, you know, being in a two piece with one person to being in a two piece with a whole, a completely different person? Yeah, was that different? Was that weird? Um, I'll be able to answer answer this better once we live in the same city and we've played live a bunch. But okay. um, Casey and I have been friends for a really long time. Uh, he actually recorded several of the really early Mary's of Thrace demos, okay. and he's just always he's always been like a big friend and fan and supporter. Um, and then we were super into his band, so that's that that, that part was pretty easy. But Steph and I have been playing we've been playing together for fifteen years, so yeah. I mean. For a long time, doing anything without her was really hard. <laughs> so I'm just just moving forward because that sometimes that's what you got to do. Has has that change made then this album much more personal to you? Because I mean, I know that's inspired by your life. Um, is 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 this a band or is this your solo project where you get help from Casey? I don't ever want to call it a solo project because that, I guess I just don't feel that I have like the auteur genius energy required to call something a solo project. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to call it a solo project, even though it kind of is. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you this way. How, um, uh, did, did Casey, I know that Casey, you know, when the recording was very important uh, for, for the album, but from the creation of the songs and, and so on, um, how influential was he or was he involved at all? In terms of the writing, like I just, I wrote everything just alone on my couch in Halifax <laughs> over like 2017, 2018. So that yeah. was all me, but I definitely don't think that plays down what he did contribute. Yeah, 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 because I think I think the drum parts and the bass parts and the production ended up crafting and shaping the song like just as much as like the basic structure and chords of it did. Uh, you know, the mares of phrase uh, are obviously part of you know antiquity. You know, we see them in the uh, the, the the epic works that Heracles has to do. Um, you have been clearly inspired or you're very clearly interested in antiquity and, and stories like that in your previous album uh you, you you it's basically a concept album about king david and, and whatnot um is this purely from like an interest or are you looking for metaphors that tell that allow you to tell that personal journey as well uh, how is this album um was what was your previous album as personal as this one is but more through the use of metaphors I think they were both equally personal and full of metaphors. Um, I think mythology, and I'm going to be including the Bible in mythology. Sure. Um, <laughs> mythology is, is like endlessly full of great metaphors and great themes and structures and narratives. And it's all very, very metal. Like <laughs> the, the mares of race, of course, being um, they ate their master's flesh and yes. they breathe fire and drink blood like that's that's very metal those are the most metal horses i can possibly think of you said no i can't wait to be in calgary you know the boxes are packed you'll be there in a few weeks um i can't wait to play with casey um so are you actively planning anything uh the album is out now um, you know, are people in, I know if you've toured North America several times with the previous albums, uh, what's, what's your plan? Uh, we have a couple short tours getting planned right now. Can't tell you anything just yet, but COVID is really becoming a problem. Like just this week, I had two friends have to cancel their tours in the middle of the tours because people in the bands got sick. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking right now, either putting stuff off a little bit or just booking shorter tours. Uh, is what we're thinking about for the meantime. One more thing that um, 
uh, we haven't really touched on uh, something that you that you do slightly different uh, this time around is um, you allow yourself at certain times to use clean vocals. Offering of hand and tongue, I believe, is a song where you surprise us at times with some very different things, and reaction to that song seemed to be quite positive. People are asking you like, "Hey, uh, that's cool. That sounds interesting. Can we hear more of that?" Um, uh, challenging to do, awkward to do. Um, I've been avoiding it for years because it's just it's very vulnerable feeling, and it's more difficult than growling. It's you know you have to worry about notes. Also, yeah, yeah. and you're the only person I've admitted this to so far. Um, we played a show in Quebec City once, and I sang the clean part from General Sherman, which is the track on our first record. Yeah. And somebody reviewed the show in French, and they said about my clean singing, their exact words were, elle n'a convaincu personne. She didn't convince anybody with her clean singing. <laughs> and that sentence, like, it just stuck in my brain. And I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do any clean singing on the next record. So I just did it because the song needed it, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Pe people seem to really enjoy it. So I seem to at least have convinced a few people. <laughs> You should just collect all the online feedback again on that song, frame that up, and send that back to whoever wrote that initial Quebec review. Just go like, you know what? Hey, maybe it does work. Um, you say though, um, you know, it's it's very vulnerable singing clean vocals. Is that uh, is there a part of being one of two people in a two-person band, and you are the singer and the person that writes the lyrics about your own life? Is there a part that is not vulnerable? That's a really good point. That's that's a super good point. And I think like even the even the most grim and brutal and blackened of metal musicians is ultimately often writing with and about their feelings. Yeah. <laughs> so that's true. There's also uh, like growling is also just like physically aggressive, whereas yes. sing, singing clean requires like a little bit more restraint and a bit more control. But okay. I, that's a very good point. Well, I, I would say like, you know, give yourself at least, you know, uh, that, that you, you should be very proud of the vulnerability that you are happy to have been accepting all this time and are, you know, are willing to channel with your art. Um, so, Teresa, um, let's fast forward beyond the, the tours that you can tell us about just yet. And you've done those plans. Um, I hope it won't take another 10 years for me to give you a call. Um, what's the uh, what's the longer term plan for for you and Casey? I don't know how I took ten years off at this point. Um, I, I I wish I, I well it, it actually would have only been eight years if the pandemic had happened because this record for was sure. finished in January twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, I can promise that the next one isn't going to take another ten years. I want to keep I want to keep making records till I fall over dead, pretty much. All right. Awesome. Well, I look forward to checking in with you when you have new material ready for the next album. Uh, and then uh, we can talk about that. In the meantime, uh, Teresa, I want to wish you a wonderful move because those are fun, <laughs> especially <laughs> from, from you know, sure, it's all within one country, but a country the size of Europe. So uh, there's a lot that comes with that. So I hope that it all goes smooth and that you and Casey can you know, start playing together very quickly and have lots of great shows for us. And then we'll keep our eyes open for any announcements of, uh, of where and when those tours and shows will be. I want to thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.